What is up guys, Mr. The Reverts here, and today we are going to be taking a look at all the maps in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now, in total, we have the most out of a few previous Call of Duty games coming in recent memory. Um, last year for World War II, we have a total of 9, but now for Black Ops 4, the map count is coming in at 15, and this includes Nuketown, which is going to be added into the game free for everyone come next month in November. But now, let's go ahead and take a look at these maps, break them down, and give you a general understanding of what you're in for come next week. Now guys, the way I'm going to be breaking them down is by the new maps that we have not yet seen before, followed by the remastered maps, and then the maps we got from the Black Ops 4 beta. So first off here, we have the map Arsenal, which was only playable during Gamescon in Germany in August, and the map takes place in North America on a weapons defense facility, which is a pretty cool theme if you ask me, and uh, one thing you'll notice from the gameplay is it's a fairly large map. There's so many different angles where you can get shot from, and just little areas where you have to look out for in case someone from the other team may be sneaking up on you. Personally, I did not like the way the map was played when I saw a gameplay of it in August, um, but maybe my views will change once I finally am able to play it. The second map we have here is called Icebreaker, which is set on a US nuclear submarine in the Arctic houses. It's a pretty unique theme we have here, and I just really love the cold, snowy aesthetics of the map. It does look very, very tight as well. Definitely, you are going to be able to spot the end enemy players very easily because of that. However, I think something like a snowy or an arctic camo for your gun and specialist character is going to definitely help you out to, you know, blend in with these surroundings. The third map we have here is called Morocco, which is set in a Moroccan village in the Sahara Desert. Personally, out of all the maps, this one looks the most beautiful to me. A few comparisons I have seen people give this map are District from COD 4 or Seat Town from Modern Warfare 3, which I do agree with. I do see the similarities. However, However, it just looks really tight together, especially in that middle market area, but you know, kind of long as you go more outside the map. So definitely I feel this map is going to be a very SMG dominant map. Um, the final map we have here is Militia, which for some reason instantly gives me Black Ops 1 vibes, I guess because of the color or something, I don't know, but I love everything about this map. It's set in a remote region of the Alaskan wilderness, and uh, it looks so different compared to the generic theme of most COD maps. Militia seems to have like a flow kind of of a circle I feel um, any COD player who's played this map for years can definitely point out the layout just seems a little bit off and the Militia is one of those maps I am most excited for out of the 15. Moving on to the 4 remastered map, the first map is arguably one of the best maps for Call of Duty Competitive and it's called Slums. Slums is set in a rundown Panama neighborhood. The map flow is very very good and Slums for some reason was just one of those maps where I was always able to have a good game on. I'm not sure if this map is going to make its way back into the competitive rotation but I would not be surprised if it does. A lot of the comp fans really enjoy playing on this map. Next up here we have Jungle and and just like the name suggests, it's set in a jungle. Never really liked playing on this map though, if I'm gonna be honest. I hated players who would, you know, go on top of the rock and camp there. Um, I would have liked to have seen a different map to get remastered for BO4 besides jungle, but it is what it is. Jungle is an okay map, but again, uh, would rather have had something else. Uh, for the third map here, we have Firing Range, and Firing Range, just like Slums, was one of those maps where I was always able to have an amazing game on. Definitely one of the top five best maps in the COD scene like ever. The map is set on a firing range and just yeah, words cannot describe how much I love this map. If you haven't played on firing range ever, then you're going to be in for a real big treat here. The last remastered map we have is called Summit, which is also another snowy theme. Um, the spawn trapping on Summit was just insane, man. Um, but yeah, definitely another big fan favorite Summit here. I really love playing on this map as well. Finally, we have the maps that we were able to play in the Black Ops 4 beta, and we have a total of six of these. The first map is called Frequency, which is a covert listening station deep in the mountainous region of the Hunan province. This map was one of my favorites, and yeah, it's just basically a good three lane map. Next up here we have is Contraband, and Contraband is set in an uncharted island off the coast of Colombia. Again, kind of similar to Frequency, this map is another good three lane map. You just got 
to be careful rushing down the middle because there are a few head glitches on each side that uh, are going to get you killed easily. But once you have good control of that middle side, your team is going to dominate pretty good on this map. The third map is called Seaside and the story slash theme of Seaside is pretty dang cool. So what happened was there was an anti-government protest in the coastal Spanish town which kind of grew out of control and it forced a military shutdown. So uh, this map was one of my favorites especially because of the theme and just the aesthetics and honestly come Halloween I think this map could get a redesign for Dia de los Muertos which I would love to see so you know just a whole totally Halloween thing version of this map that would be something to look out for coming next week here um payload is a defensive ICBM launch facility deep in the Icelandic mountainous region that has been infiltrated by hostile forces attempting to steal a nuclear warhead I thought this map was okay I mean I don't like the colors they just seem kind of dull and depressing to me um but yeah it's not the worst map I've played on but it's not the best either didn't really like the flow of this map to be uh to begin with um Hacienda though this was one of the most beautiful maps I've ever played on in Call of Duty history and I'm not kidding either very very bright vibrant colors Hacienda is set in a lavish vineyard estate situated on a quiet lake in the Spanish countryside home to a high-ranking crime syndicate boss uh, and again, yeah, you're just gonna notice instantly the colors man very very beautiful map Finally the last map we have is called gridlock and gridlock is a Japanese metropolis whose city center has been jammed up by a bank heist gone wrong I like the way this map is set up. I mean, I thought it was okay. I don't really have too, too many complaints. Um, but yeah, just in general, the maps in the beta were pretty dang solid. There wasn't a map that I just, you know, hated to play on. Like, I think that's a pretty good sign because during the past COD games, the, the betas at least, there's always been that one map where I've never liked to play on. I would always vote to skip it. And like I said, for the beta for BO4, there wasn't one of those maps. So that's a pretty good sign there. And and uh, all the other maps that we haven't seen before look really dang good, especially the aesthetics of them. But let me know which map you think looks the best and which map was your favorite that you've played, whether it's the remastered maps or the maps from the Black Ops 4 beta. Again, tell me that down below in the comments. Also, drop a like if you guys did enjoy. And thanks for watching. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.